So this budget has the big advantage that it is a growth budget. It's a growth budget because of a big focus on infrastructure, uh, which is a positive because uh, what is envisaged here, particularly for roads, uh, for rail, uh, mention also of airports and ports is a big positive. Uh, the second uh, big advantage is uh, funds for the farm sector and uh, rural. And if demand can return through these, then again, consumption drives growth because companies will produce goods to satisfy that consumption demand. So that would be important. And the third is the pay commission itself, which uh, will need uh, to see some uh, implementation through the year, which will put money in the hands of people, which again will drive consumption. So we have growth through investment, growth through consumption demand, which are big positives. The problem here is really how with the high revenue spend in these areas is in fact, the fisc of 3.5% going to be achieved, which detail we need to see. Because uh, there's some increase in service tax through CES. There are a few increases here and there. But what those numbers are, how credible is a fisc at 35 with these large expenditure budgets is what I would like to see a little more analysis of. And uh, it's possible that there is a bonanza in terms of this new uh, bill for uh, tax uh, uh, being collected, uh, black money being collected, which is a very good move. And if the government can indeed collect money there, then the bonanza there would be enormous. There's no number put for disinvestment, at least wasn't announced. And uh, again, that can be a bonanza because they have announced that they will list the GICs, that is the general insurance companies, and that could give government some funds as well. So we have to wait and see how the balancing is happening of a high expenditure as announced, but the revenue uh, targets uh, are not yet clear, at least on an initial uh, understanding of the budget, till we go into the fine tune and detail. Yeah, thank you.